Hello and Namaste. I am Mukta and you are watching Desi Deutsch, Indian living in Germany. Today I have a confession to make. I used to think that Europe, EU, Schengen, Eurozone, these are all just fancy terms that mean the same thing or at least refer to the same countries. Which is so not the case. Although I know for sure that I am not alone in this. There are so many people who get confused and use these terms interchangeably. But don't you worry, by the end of this video, it will all be very clear. Europe is the dream travel destination of a lot of people and in order to make this dream come true, one needs to understand not just the location but also the currency, the visa policies and some such serious stuff. We can understand these things clearly and easily if we understand the meaning of these terms Europe, EU, Schengen, Eurozone and the difference between them. So first we'll talk about that. But if you already have a rough idea about it or if you already know some parts of it, then you can check the description box for the timestamps and directly jump to the part that interests you the most. I would also like to tell you guys that on this channel, I usually make videos related to my experiences living in Germany as an Indian and I also upload my travel videos. So if that interests you, then please consider subscribing. Well, the basic difference between these terms is that they all refer to different aspects in which the included countries are connected. There's also some difference in the countries that they include. Europe is a geographical location. EU talks about the economical and political relations that the included countries share. Eurozone is the term for the countries that have adopted Euro as their official currency. And Schengen covers the list of countries wherein a person can freely travel if he or she has the visa or citizenship of any one of the countries. Now let's look at the meaning of each one of these terms individually and a little bit in detail. Europe is one of the seven continents of the world, just like Asia is. But Europe is the most colorful part of the world map because it has 50 different countries. And very small, small ones, so it's kind of, they're kind of nearby. Out of these 50 countries, five of them are transcontinental. So a part of these countries is in Asia and another part is in Europe. Europe is also the place that saw most of the action in both the world wars. And so, in order to ensure that peace prevails in future, an economic union was formed between six countries. That's when EU began. Although back then it was not called EU, European Union or European Union, it was actually called European Economic Community. These six countries were Germany, France, Netherlands, Italy, Luxembourg and Belgium. Over time, more and more countries decided to join this union and in the year 1992, 12 countries signed the Treaty of Maastricht, which formed EU as we know it today. So now, EU is not just limited to economic policies, but it also has its own parliament. There are laws and policies made on a lot of different topics in this parliament. There's also a European Central Bank, a EU Code of Justice and such government bodies. Today there are 28 countries in the EU but soon there will be 27 once Britain finally exits. But even after the exit the currency of Britain is not going to change because it has always used its own currency, pounds. Britain has never used euro as their currency because it's not in the eurozone. There are only 19 out of the 28 EU countries in the Eurozone and all these 19 countries have Euro as their official currency. It is also good to know that there are some countries that are not in the Eurozone so they have their own currency but they also accept Euros when you go there. So uh, when you're traveling you can just check whether the country that you're going to is in Eurozone or not, does it have its own currency and even if it does, does it accept Euros or not. When you're planning a travel, visa comes before the currency part and that's exactly where Schengen comes into picture. Open borders is the awesome thing that Schengen has to offer. There are 26 countries in the Schengen area. Well, the name Schengen comes from the place where this treaty was signed between these 26 countries. And hence, if a person has a visa or a citizenship of any one of these countries, 
then that person can roam around freely without any border check in any of these countries. How else do you think I reached Netherlands and Belgium by falling asleep in a bus? If you'd like to know more about that thing, check the video linked to the I and in the description box. Now that we are clear in the meaning of these terms, we will not only be able to plan our travels better, but we'll also be able to understand the contracts and terms and conditions of the services available in EU. Most of the contracts are valid all throughout EU. So for example, I think all or most of the SIM cards offer free roaming in EU. So does mine. So when I go to Switzerland, visa would not at all be a problem. I can hassle free go, but my calls would attract roaming charges. That's because Switzerland is in Schengen area, but not in EU. There's also this concept of European citizenship, which means that if a person has citizenship of any one of the EU member countries, then that person can live, work, retire in any of the EU countries. That's cool, yeah? Also, this person will have the exact same rights as the citizen of that country, which means that a European citizen can easily visit Switzerland but cannot stay there unless the person follows the visa requirements and vice versa. Although there is an exception to this concept of European citizenship, there are three countries that are not a part of EU but still their citizens are free to live, stay, work and retire in any of the EU countries and vice versa. Well, these three countries are Iceland, Norway and the tiny little country of Liechtenstein. These three countries along with the other member nations of the EU come under the European Economic Area which means that they follow some of the EU rules and some they don't. There's another fun fact about the European citizenship. There's actually some places in this world which are not even geographically in Europe and yet the people there get European citizenship. That's because these places are either overseas territories or formal colonies of uh, Netherlands, France, UK, Denmark, Spain and Portugal. And these regions spread all across the world. It includes Africa, South America, Atlantic, Bermuda, Madagascar, Antarctica and a lot of other places. I don't even remember and I can't even count. But the people living over there have the citizenship of the corresponding countries and hence they have the citizenship of the whole Europe. I hope that this video was informative and you enjoyed watching it. I hope that it helps you maybe right now or in future and if it actually does then please don't forget to give me a thumbs up because you know that your likes bring me smiles, your comments make me think and your subscribes and shares make me grin. So I'll see you next time. Till then, Alvida and Auf Wiedersehen! That Europe, Eurozone... Hello, hello, hello! Focus testing, focus testing! And use them entertain. Or and or and kyota. What where these terminologies terminologies recording horena the difference in the aspect I record. <laughs> Open borders is the awesome thing that Schengen offers. And Liechtenstein that are not even geographically in EU. Sounds cool, yeah?